James Lindsay, creator of Rap Snacks, started from humble beginnings, redefining snacking by merging music, flavor, and entrepreneurship. His visionary approach transformed Rap Snacks into a cultural icon, encapsulating hip hop in every bite. Today, we have the pleasure of exploring Lindsay's inspiring journey into the fusion of culinary creativity and musical inspiration. My whole thing was always, how do I get that extra? Yeah. How do I make myself better and get myself in a better position? For having me, Absolutely. looking forward to talking about my brand and my my history of rap snacks. Absolutely, and thank you for taking time out to speak with me today. I know you are starting the 2024 Disrupt Summit, and we'll get more into that later into this interview. But I want to jump off this conversation by saying, as a creative myself, I'm sure other entrepreneurs have this as well, where we have so many different ideas, you know, running through our heads that we sometimes feel like it has to be perfect right off the bat, right? And so if it's not perfect or if it's not how we want it to be, we kind of throw those things to the side, get discouraged, whatever. So I kind of find it interesting that with Rap Snack, you actually had several rebrands before it becoming the world recognized brand that we all love today. So kind of talk about, you know, what pivotal moments in the development and the evolution of Rap Snacks led to its current success? Yeah, I can, uh, well, you know, initially, uh, when I first started the brand, you know, I came out with uh, two flavors, barbecue and my honey, and back at the ranch. Uh, previously, before that, um, I worked for um, Johnson Products, the hair care company, Mr. Johnson, mm -hmm. and uh, started my own business, you know, um, sold 800 cases of wrap snacks in two hours. And, you know, initially I thought, wow, this is something that, uh, you know, it's going to be great. Um, you know, but as the time went on, had a lot of issues with manufacturing because, you know, as we talked about um, in our summit today, you know, the opportunities that and the challenges that we have as entrepreneurs in the consumer package uh, field is that, you know, you have challenges with, challenges with, you know, packaging, you have challenges with, with manufacturing, you know, and distribution, right? Mm -hmm. So started to have some issues with, um, you know, manufacturing you know, couldn't find anybody to make my product. Uh, you know, that was a very pivotal part, you know, when, when I just decided to kind of pivot a little bit, started working with uh, Meek Mill um, as, uh, you know, a brand manager and slash manager, uh, and then came back, you know, to the brand and we rebranded the brand. So that was two, three pivotal moments, you know, um, in uh, the history of Rap Snacks. And so discuss kind of some of the earlier challenges um and milestones that shaped the brand and what were some of the entrepreneurial lessons that you picked up in your earlier stages yeah well i mean i, I would say the distribution challenge with distribution and manufacturing 
was definitely, you know, some challenges. And as an entrepreneur, I had to find out you know, how do I pivot, you know, to, you know, um, really survive, you know, and really complete my mission and, you know, continue my company. And, you know, you have to have backup resources when it comes to manufacturing and distribution. You know, that's one of the reasons why when you go to any store around the country, you don't see a lot of uh, African-American uh, food brands um, owned by us because we don't, we don't, we don't have any distribution and then we don't have a lot of knowledge of uh, manufacturing. So, you know, I had to really become educated with distribution as well as manufacturing and find other sources outside of what I had uh, to manufacture the product. And that, that makes a lot of sense. If you don't know, you know, you can't grow in whatever industry you is or you're in. So it's always important to have that education background. And speaking of that, you've been in this industry 17 years. Is that correct? Yeah, no, it's been a lot longer than that. It's been 29. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I want to jump forward just a little bit um, with what moment or event in Rap Snacks journey um, that you knew was going to be a game changer for your brand? Like you, when you seen it happen, you knew, okay, yeah, Rap Snacks were on to something. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, when Amigos did uh, the jingle called Get Yourself a Bag of Rap Snacks, um, when that was happening, it was like happening in real time. Mm-hmm. And just blowing up, you know, every minute, you know, um, when they did that and it was going viral and people that didn't know Rap Snacks, like, what is Rap Snacks? And the people that knew it, like, wow, you know, that's, that's pretty big. So, you know, that, that was a real big, you know, turning point for Rap Snacks when they did that. You know, as we became a lot more viral, that's when we started repackaging the brand, coming out with new flavors. Um, you know, when I first started the brand years ago, you know, the internet wasn't as prevalent as it is now, you know, so that was a, a big part of uh, the marketing, you know, for the brand. Definitely. And speaking of the Migos, which is a hip hop artist um, group, hip hop artists have been the hallmark of, you know, Rap Snacks. So how have these collaborations with hip hop artists impacted both the brand's recognition and the artist's benefits within these partnerships? Yes. Um, well, I'll speak from a perspective from the Rap Snacks brand. You know, it really, you know, helps us get our brand out there to, you know, their collective audience, mm-hmm. right? So we have, you know, 100 million followers, you know, like Cardi B has on uh, Instagram, you know. Um, the brand is, is really recognized um, even more you know, from her impressions that she she does, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, you know, from their perspective, they're monetizing their brand, you know, outside of music, you know, um, they're getting paid, you know, a lot of money, you know, to be on a bag of potato chips. And in addition to that, you know, it's a, we call, what we call is a, a great impression because when you see that person on the bag, that same individual might want to go stream their music right so impressions media impressions uh, rap snacks impressions it's all you know it all helps the brand definitely and if you can discuss any challenges you may have faced while using these celebrities in your marketing campaign um you know i've been doing this a long time with a lot of artists you know and you know i you know when, when I signed Meek Mill to Puma, um, you know, they were like, oh, Meek is not doing this. He's not doing that. I'm like, this uses image, you know, um, you know, the challenges is some of the summer times that the guys don't know, you know, um, them doing their deliverables is just as important as you getting the money. Mm-hmm. Because if you deliverables for, with a deal, you might not get the next deal, right? You know, so um, yeah, the artists, you know, they, they kind of, you know, don't want to do some things and, you know, we don't really need them to do a lot because, you know, our, the image that we use, you know, the likeness of their brand is sometimes it's good enough. Absolutely. Um, so I did take, you know, the liberty of going on YouTube, searching to kind of do a little research myself. And I've seen a lot of your previous interviews where I saw a pattern in the conversation with the themes of marketing and distribution, as you're speaking of today. So what have been 
the vital marketing strategies you've implemented that have helped in the success and the visibility of Rap Snacks? Well, I, I would say this really, um, when I go to some of these uh, chains like Walmart and Target, you know, my strategy um, is, hey, I'm bringing you, you know, uh, a culture that you may not have, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, and most of the times they do agree. You know, when we first got into Walmart, they said, James, your brand has really brought a customer base that, you know, didn't shop at Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. um, they, they're trying to get a lot younger. And Rap Snacks has a really young, young fan base, you know, that buys that product every time. So, you know, the strategy was, hey, you know, make sure that you understand that we serve a big audience, right? That um, is really an audience that you should you should have. So that the market the strategy was, if you put us in in your stores, you know, we'll we'll provide you with that um, that core of people that buy rap snacks that ordinarily wouldn't come into your store. Got you. And I'm sure that there were some challenges um, with you know trying to pitch yourself to. Um, Walmart or these other, you know, companies for distribution. So what were some of those challenges? Of course, the success is obvious. You're in their stores, but take us through, you know, the challenges you faced. I mean, the challenges that, you know, you're pitching, uh, you know, rap snacks to maybe, you know, a 55, 6 year old white, white guy who really knows nothing about, you know, the, the culture. Mm -hmm. So um, what I have to do is really educate them on the culture, right? And tell them that, you know, we will be the extension to the marketplace. There's no caramelization because you guys don't carry any products that counts as like wrap snacks, you know? Um, so the challenge is, you know, is really teaching them, you know, yeah. the, the culture. Then once the product gets in there, they start doing more research because they're like, well, this product is selling. You know, it's selling because it's something that you really don't know about and something that you should have been probably had in your stores already. Definitely, <laughs> because a lot of people are not up on the hip hop culture. And so with Rap Snacks, how do you, your brand ensure that it stays culturally relevant while appealing to those people that are outside of that immediate hip hop community? Well, we just maintain a, a great tasting product. You know, I, I always feel like if you your product you know, is a great tasting product, I mean, you might have a core um, group of people that you market to. Mm -hmm. But you can have anybody pick your product and be like, whoa, you know, I, the the rap snacks, um, the wrapper was one thing, but the product is actually good, right? So that helps expand your brand outside of your core business because they just love good tasting product. Absolutely. And I've tasted the Cardi B ones. I would have to say those are definitely my favorites. Um, and we'll get more into, you know, the flavors and how you cultivate those, you know, seasonings for your customers but speaking of the snack industry and how it is ever changing what market trends do you foresee shaping the snack industry in the coming years well yeah i, I would say that you know there's it's going to be a better for you trend um you know i think people are looking to snack um more healthier um you know but at the same time People want the product to taste good. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to find a product that is a lot more healthier, but a product that tastes good, you know, which is not easy. Yeah. So, so you got to meet in the middle and call it better for you rather mm -hmm. than, you know, you know, something that's really, really healthy. And how do but, you position ahead of, you know, the changes? Say again? How do you wrap snack position itself to stay ahead of those changes that are coming? Oh, um, by, you know, making acquisitions of other companies, you know, I'm looking at, um, you know, we have a timeline on new product for about two years. So we're already ahead of, you know, some of these companies because we're smaller and we're able to act you know, a lot faster than some of these bigger companies. Gotcha. So I kind of want to switch gears just a little bit um, and talk about Disrupt um, Summit 2024. Um, reflecting on the success of the first 
from it? What motivated you to organize the second edition and what innovative elements can attendees anticipate this year? Well, what motivated me is, and it's the same thing as motivated me for the first time, is giving out, providing information. But this year, particularly, we wanted to give information out to consumer package, you know, um, um, companies that or some companies that were just reaching their peak, okay. right? Get exposed them to uh, some of our accounts, our brokers, information, you know, because information is key. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we really feel like we've done that. The first day was phenomenal. We had Dave, you know, from Dave Cheesesteaks out of Atlanta. You know, we had the, um, you know, the Trapper, uh, Wall Street Trapper today. I mean, we had some great speakers. And, um, you know, we feel like we can take this, you know, on a national scale. You know, we just have to prove the concept. And that's what we're doing. Um this this year and last year got you and so do you plan to have this summit available in other cities like atlanta or other absolutely. places absolutely because i like to open up to the public right now this is just to our distributors got you so atlanta definitely would be the place that we're thinking about taking it to and open it up to um a lot of the uh, people you know and other companies that you know well even even Future entrepreneurs that don't have companies that have ideas because, you know, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of dreamers out there like me. Absolutely. And I can say I'm one of them. So and there's a lot of us, like you said. So I look forward to, you know, that coming. Um, your brand is known for its unique flavors and collaboration with hip hop artists. So how do you select these partnerships and how can you share any, or can you share, I'm sorry, any existing collaborations that are coming down the pipeline? Uh, you know, it's a couple of things, you know, I, I, I'm a really, I love music, you know, I, I love, you know, hip hop, but I also um, love the movement of different artists, you know, and I, you know, I picked these guys, from you know, you know, people that have that that fan base that you know people think that's not as big, but it's just like a a crazy fan base. Like Lil Boosie has a crazy fan base, yes. right? <laughs> you know, it's that big, but you know his product really sells because those fans they just they just come you know come from nowhere. <laughs> and from that standpoint, I mean, I've always been a flavor guy. You know, I've and I tell the story all the time that you know I've developed my skills. From eating snack foods, man. I was one of those kids that was eating snack foods all the time, you know. So, um, you know, and I always wanted to develop a flavor profiles that nobody else has out there because that's the key to that one of the key success, um, you know, a key success point to rap snacks is having the artists, but also having a flavor that people will love. And um, you know, when they eat the bad one bag, they can't just eat one bag. They can come back and keep coming back, you know, for and for more and more product, you know. So, um, you know, I, I I just connect with the artists and with people. I'm like, you know, this guy will be a good partner. Like I always knew the Migos would be a good partner. Yeah. You know, to answer your other question, NBA Young Boy is our next our next artist. Um, the next up. Yeah, his fan base is another one of those that will ride for him all the way. <laughs> so I'm excited to see that. And can you tell us about the flavoring of that one, or have y'all not cultivated that flavor for that bag yet? Yeah, we have, we have an all-in barbecue. So, you know, it's just a lot of different barbecues that is and and, and then into one flavor profile, which is amazing. Got it's you. amazing. And I then we have, we did it. Would say, oh, go ahead. Me. I'm sorry. <laughs> did, did a um, another Flago um, product, um, and it's actually like a sort of like a taki on a potato chip. Okay. And, um, and uh, I, I'm really excited about that. And then we did um, honey barbecue, honey barbecue heat, um, a honey hot uh, cheese crunchy. Okay. Uh, for, and then we did a hot crunchy for it. I think he has four items coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, young boy has four items coming out. Yes, Got you. Yeah. Okay. I would love to taste those so I can get a little sneak peek before the other people. 
<laughs> you. Okay, got so you. when it comes to artists that may want to partner with Rapsnet, can you um, tell us like what you're looking for in that partnership relationship with any artists that may want to, like I said, work with you all? Yeah, I'm just looking for artists that, you know, have a unique um, fan base that I feel like, you know, that we can help expand. Um, you know, the music is one thing, but like I said, you know, be able to sell um, uh, uh, your your likeness on a potato chip bag, it's not easy because everybody we get is not like the best sellers. Gotcha. Right? <laughs> so, so um, you know, it, you know, we want to partner with people unique, it's people that know how to promote, people that uh, that are going to be around for a while, and that has has a track record of success, success like rap snacks. Absolutely. And is there any rap snack flavors that have become a fan favorite unexpectedly, like that surprised you and your team? Yes, the the all in flavor. Gotcha. You know, all in flavor, which. You know, it has all these different flavors in it, and we can't keep that on the shelf. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's the little baby all in. You know, and it was funny because I named the product all in, but I didn't know little baby had a song all in. Yeah. So, that is, that's, yep. <laughs> so it was like, it was one of those times when you know, you know, right? It's just like, oh, okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. you know, so, Absolutely. Have there been any wild or unconventional or flavor suggestions for rap snacks that were entertained but didn't quite make it to production? Oh, a lot. We have <laughs> we have a bunch of stuff that's you know sitting that's sitting in the vault. I say, you know that, and I'm like, no, nah, we can't do that. You know? <laughs> you know, I mean, because you know we have I have seasoning companies that send me, you know. Um, different type of samples all the time. And I'm like, my people are not eating that. It's not <laughs> so do you utilize customer or consumer feedback when it comes to the development? Oh, all the okay. All the time. Yes. I mean, you know, we're, we're driven by data. I mean, we know, you know, who our customer is. We know, you know, we listen to the feedback of the product and the flavors and all that good stuff. So, one thing about, you know, the, the culture, they're going to tell you, you know, what they're feeling, right? Yeah. Good or bad. Absolutely. So when it comes to community, when it comes to when people think about Rap Snack, what do you want them to understand about your brand's mission? Yeah, I want them to understand that, you know, we are um, very um, committed to reinvesting into our communities. We have, you know, our foundation is, is, is the Boston Foundation, which we have several uh, programs that we work with in the communities of Miami and throughout the throughout the country with our different with our programs, entrepreneur programs, teaching these kids how to start a business, you know, to um, how to trademark their names and you know all above, you know, and then we have a stock boss up app which you have to look at which you know it's really about financial literacy piece which really teaches anybody to invest from a to z it just tells you it puts you through you never invest in the stock market yeah uh, you give um the stock boss up a couple of days and you you'll be investing you know into the stock market and one of the reasons i was very passionate about that is because you know i i'm an investor now but if I would have invested years ago and knew about it, you know, I would be a lot farther in, in investing. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would like to give, you know, um, these kids in these inner cities the opportunities to get a head start. You know, if they would have invested a thousand dollars in Apple 20 years ago, they would probably all probably be millionaires. Wow. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So you can go in there and it'll teach you how to invest at an early age. You know, and that's another avenue of uplifting our people out of poverty, you know, is being able to make make them understand financial literacy piece and investing, you know, instead of, you know, buying things that don't have a return, no Absolutely. type of return. 
And like you said, knowledge is power. So that's amazing. I love that. And speaking of, you know, teaching other people, you know, some of the things that you wish you would have known years ago, can you kind of share with us some of the lessons that you learned um, within the snack industry that, you know, if you knew beforehand, uh, you wouldn't have to have made some of the mistakes that you made without throughout going, going throughout this process. Yeah. And I think I touched on it earlier, but, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to emphasize it again. I didn't know, know, you know, that distribution was the major avenue for Mm -hmm. or to really scaling your company. You know, um, you know, I thought I can, I thought it was easy, you know, that, you know, the same people that were distributing the Frito-Lay guys that I had a great idea, they would pick my product up and sell it. And that was not the case because they don't want any competition. They don't want you, you know, coming in and, you know, really outselling those guys, right. you know, so you know, I, you know, I wish I would have been a little more realistic about that early on, um, but it was okay because, you know, it took me a while, you know, to find all my distributors around the country. You know, now, you know, it's a big asset for us. You know, mm-hmm. so when we other entrepreneurs with their consumer package, a good company, you know, we can put them straight through our system. Absolutely. Thank you for reiterating that. <laughs> Two years ago, you did announce that the brand was going into the beverage business. Now that it is a new year, um, what other avenues or markets are you going to potentially tap into with the new products? Well, um, we're tapping into the trucking business. Um, you know, we, you know, you know, we feel like we can, you know, really do a great job in trucking because, you know, we spend a, a certain amount of dollars on trucking every year mm-hmm. and we hired an extra person to really bring everything in house and not and not broker our, our products so we become we become the broker we actually ship our product and now we're shipping some of our manufacturers products you know um so that was a, a part of a revenue that we've been missing mm-hmm. you know uh we spent five million dollars last year you know and this year we made three million dollars right that means we only have to spend two million dollars right <laughs> and i love watching a lot of your interviews because you do pick up a lot of gems for those people that you know aren't so marketing savvy or anything like that and with that do you plan to possibly offer the community any type of like marketing courses or marketing classes so that if they are building their business they're able to you know be able to do it correctly yeah, if somebody would have me. Yes, I think I would. I'm, on <laughs> I'm putting that out there. Okay, I feel like we need it. I I would definitely be in attendance. Okay. Well, yeah, at least all these guys got these courses out there. I might, I might, I might have to try that. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> Absolutely. Um. So wrapping up this interview, um, because I don't want to take too much more of your time. Looking ahead, what legacy do you hope Rap Snacks will leave in the food industry, and what impact do you envision it having on future generations? Yeah, the impact is that knowing that you can disrupt any industry if you put your mind to it, and and the legacy is that. You know, we have um, paved the way for other people that look like me to get into this 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 industry, which is a multi-billion dollar, billion dollar industry, right? Um, to go out there and, and carry the torch um, and eventually help other people that look like them as well. We spread, you know, spread, you know, spread the market around. I mean, it's a you know, we, you know, as Afro-Americans and Hispanic pe- people, we represent less than 1% of um, the snack marketplace. So we have a huge upside, not only for myself, or, but for the individuals who come up behind me. Absolutely. And I just want to give you your flowers and say thank you for, you know, being that impact and being that influence for other people that are coming up within the food industry. Like I said, even within my industry, it is inspiring to see. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and if anybody wants to follow you or keep up with you or Rap Snacks Journey, um, please tell them where they can follow you on all social media platforms. You can follow me on Instagram. It's ask, ask, ask uh, fly, F-L-Y, 
and, and the number one. Again, thank you so much today for your time. I appreciate it. And I hope the rest of your event goes well this week. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm.